Good morning. morning. It's good to be here today. Glad you're here today. I want to take a moment and welcome those that are joining us online as well. Uh, We just hope the Lord blesses your life through this service today. I want to welcome our first time guest. If you're new, my name is Justin Harley, and I'm a senior pastor here, and we're just so glad to have you. And we hope that if you're uh, in the area, that you'll get plugged into a church family. And we hope it's here. If, If it's here, we're going to help you just draw closer to the Lord, uh, build your faith, know about Jesus more, and uh, we just want to help you in that walk. And we believe that God has put some things inside of you too as well, that, that when we work together, uh, that's when we accomplish the most. As the people of God, as the family of God, we accomplish the most when we all cooperate, when we all uh, work together in a coordinated fashion to serve Him. Uh, that's when we're at our most effective. So if you're visiting for the first time, you're new here, we would love to have you Take one of those cards, like it said, uh, fill it out and take it to the Welcome Center on your way out today. We've got a little gift for you and some information about the church. And we just hope that you get plugged in somewhere because that's the way God has he's designed us to be in a Christian community, to work together, to cooperate, uh, to help one another, to build one another up. And so the body of Christ needs you and you need the body of Christ. And so we just want to thank you for being here. Can we just take a moment and welcome our guests this morning? Let them know that we're glad they're here. Let's put our hands together. Let our guests know that they're, we're glad that they're here. It's so good to have you, and uh, we also have some Spanish-speaking people in the house today, and we have translation today in Spanish. Uh, If you need that, you can find out that in the Welcome Center. So uh, we're thankful for our Spanish-speaking folks. Bienvenido. Gracias por escuchando. Hoy. I could preach this whole thing in Spanish if I want to, but it wouldn't make any sense, so I'll do it in English. So. Well, I'm excited today about sharing as I've been sharing on faith. Um, I was, over the season that I've been in in my life, um, I've been thinking so much about faith because when you have nothing else left, when your life is on the line and your family can't be there with you and uh, the doctors can't guarantee you anything, thank God for the medical staff or the doctors, but when they can't guarantee anything, when the odds are against you, when your friends can't be there with you. All you have then is your faith, really. That's all you have is your faith. But the good thing about the faith is your faith can save you. Your faith can save you. Your faith can can heal you. Your faith can bring you out of that situation, can bring you through that situation. And so I've been thinking so much about the importance of our faith, how important our faith is. Our faith can move mountains. I want to read a few scriptures to you today. Um, uh, before we do that, I was, when I was in college, uh, I heard this story, these stories about uh, this man who had such great faith that he could just pray and instantly things would happen. Uh, that he would pray if, it was, if he was outside and they were doing something and, and the clouds came up or whatever and he... He would pray and the clouds would just part. He said, Lord, let your servants be outside in peace today. And the clouds would just part. And and some of the kids at Lee would talk about how great this man's faith was, that his faith was so great that when he just prayed, uh, uh, things happened immediately. Miracles happened immediately when he prayed. We were like, wow, that's awesome. I never met the guy, didn't know the guy, and I'm sure he was a man of great faith. But here's the thing is that I always thought when I heard that, but we see people in the Bible as well. I, when I heard that, I always thought, you know, I have faith and I want to have great faith like that. But a lot of times when I pray, the things don't happen immediately. Anybody ever experienced that? before is you pray and the things don't happen immediately maybe you're in traffic and you pray for the traffic to part but it doesn't part you have to still wait for that traffic and I'll think about stories in the Bible stories like uh, Abraham who was the father of the faith he was the father of the faith and yet he was they were hit him and Sarah they were praying for a son and they waited for 25 years and I don't think it was because Abraham didn't have any faith in fact he, he's the father of the faithful and it says the Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as as righteousness so he believed he was a man of faith there wasn't anything lacking uh, in his faith and yet it took for 25 years for his prayer to be answered so I believe that you can have great faith and you can pray and sometimes just see these things immediately happen I've seen that in my life before I've seen God turn around a situation quickly by praying and believing but I've also had things in my life that I was praying and believing 
believing and the situation didn't turn, out, turn around quickly. Maybe I had to wait and maybe I had to be patient and things like that. And so when we're talking about faith, I believe the measure of faith is not how quickly you can get your prayers answered. But the measure of faith sometimes is can I continue to believe even sometimes when circumstances are going against me? Can I continue to believe God's word? And so I've been studying about, about faith and praying about faith. And I want to just uh, get some script, show us some scriptures today and uh, what faith means. Because here's the thing. Let me, uh, what I'm, the faith that I'm talking about today, let me just demystify that for uh, a few moments. Because what I'm talking about is faith in Jesus Christ. I'm talking about a belief in Jesus Christ, a belief that he's the Messiah, a belief that he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I, I, I'll get to the main scripture in just a moment, but I want to share the scripture that I didn't put in, uh, in my notes uh, just really quickly. But the Lord dropped this on my heart. It's in Romans chapter 10 uh, and, in verse, uh, and in verse 8. Um, it says the message concerning faith is, we don't have this for the screens, but just listen really quickly. The message concerning faith that we proclaim, listen to this. Here's the message Paul says, the message that concerning faith that we proclaim, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. How many believe that? Would you say that with me today? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. And so there's what Paul says, the message concerning faith. We, we think about, man, I want to have great faith. How many want to have great faith? I want to have great faith. But here's what I want to show you, is that the faith that the Bible says if you, if, you, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe it in your heart that you will be saved. Thank God. Thank God for that. And so I want to talk today about growing our faith and increasing our faith. We were um, several months ago and we were at a staff uh, get together, a staff retreat. And we were listening to some videos, some teachings. And this man who is a pastor of the largest church in Sweden I've heard him speak several times, listen to him on video and things like that. Uh, Joachim Lundquist is his name. But he was talking about this thing that happened many years ago in their church. That is in Sweden, uh, I'm sure it's a very tough country to, to minister the gospel in of Jesus Christ. There's not a church on every corner in Sweden. But he has a large church there uh, in one of the large cities. And um, he was talking about this, uh, this man, this Muslim man. That he went to some, he didn't know anything about church, he didn't know anything about their church, he didn't really know anything about Christianity. But he went to sleep one night and he had a dream. And in his dream, he said all he saw is he saw this huge room. He didn't know where it was, he'd never seen it before, but he saw this massive room. And there was a bunch of people inside the room and they had their hands raised up like that and they were singing. And that's all that happened in the dream. And he woke up and he didn't know what in the world it meant. He felt like God was trying to tell him something, but he didn't know anything about faith other than the Islamic faith. He didn't know anything about Christianity. He just felt like God was trying to tell him something, but he had no idea what he was supposed to do with it or what it meant. And so the next night he went to sleep and he had this dream. And in the dream, the same thing. He saw this large room and it just people in there lifting their hands and they were singing. He couldn't hear what they were saying or anything like that. He just saw a large room full of people. And as he woke up the next morning, it disturbed him, but he had no idea what it meant and no idea what to do with it because he had no context. And so the next night on Saturday night, he went to sleep and he had this dream again in this large room. He saw the same large room and he, go, and he woke up on Sunday morning and he said, I've got to do something about this. I mean, I'm supposed to go to this place or something. So he went and got on the train and rode into the city and he didn't know what to do. He was just basically acting in a faith and he didn't know what he was supposed to be doing, but he knew he kept having this dream and he felt like God was trying to tell him something and get through to him somehow, but didn't know what it meant. He had zero context. So he just rode the train and rode the train. He didn't know what to do. He, so he just rode the train and rode the train. He was looking for a sign or anything. So he just kept riding the train and he I think, rode it for hours till he got to the last stop and he got off at the last stop. And he, I had, he had no idea what to do. So he said he got off and when he got off, there was a man standing there and, and looking at him. And, and he just started to walk up to the man, and the man was looking at him. And the man said to him, young man, uh, you went one stop too far. You need to get on that train and go back. And that's all the guy said to him. 
He was like, all right. So he got back on the, tr- on the other side, on the train, and went back one station and got off. And when he got off, he was looking around, and, and he, he didn't know where to go, and he was talking to people. He started talking to people, and he, said, and he asked somebody, do you know there's a building? There's some building I'm trying to get to. Is there a big building around here? And there's people, are, it's full of people inside of it, lifting their hands and singing. And the person he asked said, yeah, that's a Pentecostal church right down the street. If you go down there, they're back there having service this morning. You go down there, you can, you can join them if you want to. So he goes to the, he walks to the church. After he got to the station, the man told him to go, to go back. He walks to the church and he comes in, knows nothing about Christianity. And he walks in and he sees this room that is in his dream. He sees a massive room full of people raising their hands and singing. And it's a worship service that he knows nothing about, that he's never been in. So he sits through the worship service. He listens to the the sermon he gives his life to Jesus after the sermon and he joins the church and he becomes a part of the big ministry that they have that ministers to Muslim people in Afghanistan and through Sweden and all throughout the earth and here's the thing about faith is that when we have to see there's things that got there's things that how many of you know that you can't make somebody you don't know have a dream and there's nothing that really could guide him there to that church other than God did it and there are some things that God can do how many know that God can do some things that no human being could ever do some things that are impossible and so in our lives what we need sometimes in our lives is we need God to do the impossible when because here's the thing when God starts doing the impossible when God can do things in a moment in somebody's life save somebody that we couldn't do no matter how much effort we put on no matter how what kind of advertising campaign no matter what kind of inviting God can do the impossible and as the people of God that's what we need from God we need him to do the impossible and we need the faith to believe it to believe that he can do the impossible faith is believing uh faith is believing when you can't uh, sometimes you can't see it. Sometimes it, you can't prove it. It's like faith in Jesus Christ. It's believing that he died on the cross, that he rose on the third day, that he's coming back. Even though that you, can, you can't see him, he's invisible. But it's believing that Jesus is Lord. How many believe that Jesus is Lord? And that's faith. And the faith is powerful. We've been, I've been talking over the past few weeks about what uh, Peter called like precious faith, a faith of equal standing as the apostles. And Jesus, in fact, he's, he said, he even told the, he told the disciples that you don't need a whole lot of it because it's so powerful, you don't need a whole lot of it. Let me read you this story. This is our uh, main scripture this morning as I want to show you how powerful faith is. And I want to show you, even if you have a little faith, I want to show you how far it can go in your life. Matthew 17 and uh, in verse 14, it says, when they came Uh, To the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. And here's what Jesus said, you unbelieving and perverse generation. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy And he healed him at that moment. And then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? And he answered, because you have so little faith. Now, how many times you read the scripture, you know that sometimes Jesus says things that surprise you. Uh, He says things that are like, why why, why did he say that? He said they could, listen to what he tells them. They said, why couldn't we do that? Why couldn't we drive it out? He He said, because you have so little faith. But listen to what he says next. He says, truly I tell you, if you have If you just had faith, he said, you couldn't drive it out because you didn't have enough faith. But if you just had faith like a mustard seed, a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. It doesn't say the details of everything that was going on in that situation with the disciples, why they couldn't cast the demon out. But Jesus said they couldn't cast it out because they didn't have enough faith. But then he said, if you just had a tiny, if you just had a tiny little bit, and I can guarantee you, it doesn't give a lot of the context about what they were praying or what they were doing, but I can guarantee you two things is that number one, they didn't have any power to drive that demon out in their own strength and their own flesh. The other thing, 
thing that I can guarantee you is the Holy Spirit had the power, to, had absolute authority over that demon to drive that demon out. So even though it doesn't give a lot of context, I can guarantee you in something they were doing, they, were try, they had heard Jesus pray a prayer, they had seen a formula, there was something that they were trying to rely on themselves and they couldn't drive the demon out. But I can guarantee you if they were relying on the power of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit has complete authority over that demon and could have driven it out. And Jesus said you couldn't drive it out because you didn't have enough faith. But even if you had a mustard seed, using an analogy with the mustard seed in the mountain and he's talking about just a small amount of belief that can see things that are accomplished that are seemingly impossible and he's talking about the power of faith and here's the thing about having great faith how many want to have great faith in your life you want your faith to grow and increase I want my faith to increase but here's the thing Jesus said if you just have a mustard seed and here's the thing about faith is for our faith to increase we don't need to conjure up some more willpower you know, some more uh, intelligence within ourselves. For our faith to increase, we need to depend less on ourselves. Like John the Baptist said, let me decrease so that he can increase. Because what faith is, is faith is the belief that God can do the impossible. And I can tell you right now, I can't do the impossible. Anybody here that can do the impossible? We can't do the impossible. But if we want our faith to grow, that means we have to depend not more on ourselves. If we want our faith to grow, we have to depend less on ourselves and more on the power of God. And I want to see our faith grow in this place today. I want to see mountains move. We need God to move in our lives. We need God to move in our church. And so I want to share just over the next few moments. I won't be too long. I'm mindful of the time, but I want to share just a few things that uh, I believe that we can do to see us grow in our faith and increase in our faith. The first thing for our faith to grow, we must grow in our knowledge of Jesus. If you want your faith to grow, you need to grow in your knowledge and understanding of who Jesus is and what he's done and what he does. Because the more we know and understand his character, his word, his promises, the more we're familiar with him, the more likely we are to believe. Stories that I heard like that of that man that had that dream and stories that I could tell you in my life, I stand here today as a miracle. I stand here today as going through something that... Uh, by statistics, I shouldn't be here today. But God, he saved me. He had mercy on me. And the thing is, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the thing about faith is when we share our story or when we read the word of God, when we remind ourselves who Jesus is, what he has done and what he can do, it causes our faith to leap. It causes our faith to leap. I was reading this week about uh, this story about uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. And the angel had told her that she was going to be pregnant, basically pregnant with the Messiah. And she came to visit her cousin, Elizabeth. Elizabeth was pregnant with the, who was to be John the Baptist. And the Bible says that when, when Mary greeted Elizabeth, that the, and the baby inside the womb heard Mary's greeting, the Bible says the baby leapt and Mary was filled with the Holy Spirit. See, there's power in your testimony. There's power when we build one another up in the faith. There's power in hearing the word of God. There's power in blessing one another. And the, just Mary's greeting to Elizabeth caused that baby to leap and caused Mary to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And here's the thing is faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When we share stories of faith, when you just open up the Bible and read the word of God, you know the Bible says angels, they hearken to the voice of the Lord. The angels that are there in heaven, they, they obey the commands of the Lord. They listen to the voice of God. They obey the voice of God. And when they hear the word of God being read, just like we read the word of God out loud earlier, angels hearken to the voice. They listen. They turn their ear to the voice of the Lord. And I believe that the, the spirits of darkness that are against us as well, I believe they turn their ear to the voice of the Lord. They're not worried about what we got to say, but when they hear God's voice speaking, they know that when, the, the, when Jesus Jesus says, come out of him, they know they got to go. And here's the thing about faith and the power of God's word, that when we hear God's word, we read God's word, we build ourselves up in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It causes our faith to leap. It causes our faith to grow. And so if you want your faith to grow, you need to build up. You need to be built up in the knowledge of Jesus. I've been studying the Bible since I was a kid and for many years studying for many hours every week studying the word of God. And 
here's the thing is that I always learn new things. Every time when I study the word of God, I'll see something that I've never seen before. I'm reminded of truths that I've forgotten or maybe that I'm not applying to my life. And so if you want your faith to grow, you need your knowledge to grow of Jesus. You need your understanding. Like the apostle Paul said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And so we, we have to have a heart to know Jesus more because we're in the information age and there is so much information some of it is good some of it's not so good some of it is accurate some of it is not as accurate but we need to make sure that we're feeding ourselves the truth because the truth will set you free and so my prayer for you today and for me is that God would give us a hunger to know Jesus more how many of you want to know Jesus more I want to know Jesus more I've been serving him pretty much all my life but I want to know Jesus more because that is the foundation of your faith. And the, your faith is the foundation of every other virtue that you have. Uh, and let me read this scripture, Proverbs 9, uh, Proverbs 9, 10, and this is in the New King James. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And so one of the most important things about your life is what do you believe? What do you believe about Jesus? Because this is what the foundation, this is what your foundation, I I feel such a passion for these young, young, our young adults. We had a group of young adults over at our house on Friday night and it was so much fun, but I feel such a passion for them because they're being bombarded at sometimes early middle school, elementary school, high school, and the university, they're being bombarded that there's no truth, that everything is relative. And then they get in a jam, they get in a crisis, and they have nothing to hold on to. I thank God when I was in that ambulance, I didn't know I was going to live or die, but I knew I had something to hold on to. I knew that I had my faith. And I'll tell you, that's the foundation Paul said, these three things remain faith, hope, and love, and the greatest is love because love is faith in action. But here's the thing, the greatest might be love, but faith is the foundation. It is like the foundation of any house. Jen and I, we used to buy some fixer-upper houses and things like that, and and we could do a little painting and different things. I'm not very, we're not very good at it, but she's better at me than most of the stuff. When I need a light fixture replaced, I call Jenna. She's the one that replaces them. Uh, Most of the stuff, I do the easy stuff. But we fixed some things up. We uh, many years, like ten years ago, nine years ago. Um, I don't know how long ago it was, but we were looking at this house, and the foundation was just so messed up, and it was going to cost like a hundred thousand dollars to redo this house. And we ended up not getting it. But here's the thing: you can fix a lot of different things, but if the foundation is not right, you got to get the foundation right. If the foundation is messed up. You, it needed jacked up. I mean, you can bust out windows doing that. You can, you know, bust the sheetrock, mess up the walls. You can do all kind of stuff. If the foundation is not right, then everything that's built on it is going to be messed up. And so Paul told Timothy, he said, watch your life and your doctrine closely. Guard them. Because if you do, you'll save both yourself and your hearers. And I want to tell you that today as Christians. If you're the last person that believes that the Bible is true, be the last person that believes that the Bible is true. If nobody else, none of your friends or nobody in your works think that Jesus was raised from the dead, believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. Stand firm on your faith. I don't care how unpopular it gets. Stand firm on your faith because there's going to come a day in your life where all you have to hang on to is your faith. And your faith is powerful. Your faith is mighty to save you through the faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus told this this woman who anointed his feet with perfume. He said two things to her. He said, ma'am, your sins are forgiven, which really uh, bothered the religious leaders. Uh, And then the next thing that he said to her, he said, ma'am, you can go. Your faith has saved you. And so that faith is a belief The faith in Jesus is the belief that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross, that he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit on the third day, that he's seated at the right hand of the Father and he's returning again for us. And that faith is powerful to save you. And I'm telling you, you don't, it's like Jesus said, you don't need a whole lot of it, you just need a mustard seed to believe 
that he is alive and it can move mountains. It can do things that are impossible. It says in 2 Peter 3, 17 and 18, it says, you therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you're not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. Don't get carried away with everything that's going on, all the teaching, all the things that are going on. Stand with the word of God. Here's what it says in 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. And so we need to go on here for faith. For our faith to grow, we need our knowledge of Jesus to grow. We need our knowledge of the word of God to grow. We need our understanding of the word of God to grow. And secondly, for our faith to grow, we need our dependence upon Jesus. We need to grow in our dependence upon Jesus. We need to depend on him more and more. And here's the thing, is that we, these, the disciples, they couldn't cast the demon out in their own power. They could only cast the demon out in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so evidently they weren't depending on the power of the Holy Spirit. And here's the thing is that we, we have for our faith to grow, we need to depend less on ourselves and more on the power of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean we don't, we don't need to be active. We talked last week about active faith. We talked about exercising our faith and things like that. And God, he wants to do it. Just like it says in Ephesians, it says God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or imagine. But listen to what it says, according to the power that works through us. And so faith is us believing and God working through us, but faith is us being more dependent upon him and his power and less dependent upon our own self. And so for our faith to grow, you don't need to rely more on your own ability, on your own knowledge, your own intelligence, your own talent, your own resume, your own resources, your own strength. For your faith faith to grow, you need to rely more on him and less on yourself. We need to rely completely on God. When I was a young man, uh, I would plan these trips of this church that I was a part of in Powder Springs, Trinity Chapel. Uh, We had about 51, 52 staff members, something like this, and something like that. And um, and we did a lot of mission trips and things like that. And they started asking me to plan the trips, and I would plan mission trips of 50, 60 kids. We went to different places, and we would do staff retreats. They would ask me to plan them when I was a young man, and I would plan the whole thing for them, and everybody else just got got to go. And and I like doing it um, for several reasons. One of the reasons I like doing it was because of hospitality to get to do something where somebody else can enjoy and somebody else can be blessed and you can get to you know, use your gift for the Lord to help just bless somebody else that they can have a good time. And I would even fly, sometimes I'd go the day before drive or fly if you had to fly. I'd go the day before or a couple of days before, check the hotel out, check restaurants out, check things, check the routes out. This is before uh, you had voice navigation and things like that and I would just check things out and I would get and I would try so hard to make it such a good trip and I would work so hard and things like that like I said one of the reasons I did I want I wanted to serve people I want them to have a good time but as a young man another reason that I really liked doing it and they kept asking me to lead the trips and I said absolutely I'll lead the trip one of the reasons that I like doing it is I got to pick the food places right okay I got to pick the restaurants and, and, and that's why I like it and I got to pick where we went and how many times I, we could eat four times a day if I wanted to and and I could pick the places. And one of the reasons really that I thought about that I really liked doing it, and I started to realize this, is because when I led it, I got to control where we stayed. I got to control it. And I got to control where we ate. And I got to control what time I got to set the schedule. I could say, we're getting up at 10 o'clock this morning if I wanted to. We're going to take a break. And, and one of the reasons I like to lead it is because when I led it, I could be in control of what was going on and things like that. And I believe a lot of times as human nature, we like to control things, don't we? We like that added sense of security. We like to know that I can handle this. But how many of you know there's things in this world that are outside of your hands? There's things that you cannot control. And the fact of the matter is when you try to control everything, sometimes I believe we shut God off from what God wanted to do because he wanted to do a miracle, but we had the, we had the wheel. We need to listen to that Carrie Underwood song, Jesus Take the Wheel. I heard somebody blamed it one time they got in that accident and they said they told Jesus to take the wheel and he didn't do it. And they blamed it on Carrie Underwood. But here's the thing is a lot of times we're trying to be in the driver's seat. We're trying to be in control when we need to, we need to do what we can do in our own strength, but we need, to, we need to surrender. And here's the thing, if you want to serve Jesus, you're going to have to surrender. You're going to have to surrender a lot of things about your, 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 your will and your life and things like that. And you're going to have to become more dependent on him. And if you want your faith to grow, you're going to have to surrender 
some things that you can't control. Jeremiah 17, verse 5 says, Thus says the Lord, listen to this, listen to this, thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man. Look at that. Cursed is the man who trusts in man. How many times do we do that? How many times do we look to the prices, to the stock market, to the inflation, to the economy, to the work, and we're trusting in man? Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart turns away from the Lord. He's like a shrub in the desert. He shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. And listen to this. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots and by the stream and does not fear when the heat comes, for its leaf remains green and It is not anxious in the year of drought. It is not anxious when the prices go up. It is not anxious when inflation happens. It is not anxious when the stock market goes down. It is not anxious because it does not trust in man. Its trust is in the Lord. Its trust is the Lord. If you want your faith to grow, you need to stop trusting in the things around you because your, 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 uh, your life, your destiny is not in the hand of your supervisor at work. Your destiny is not in the hand of a governor or a mayor or a council. Our destiny is in the hand of the Lord. I'm going to be closing in just a moment, but if we want our faith to go, we need to depend more on Jesus. If we want our faith to grow, the last thing, if we want our faith to grow, we need to grow our love for Jesus. We need to grow our love for Jesus. And love in that context, agape love in the Bible, is not a feeling. Love is an action. And we talked about this last week. We talked about exercising our faith because when we exercise our faith, it gets stronger. Just like if you go to the gym and you begin to run and you begin to lift or whatever you begin to do, strength, that it, that it starts to grow and it starts to grow and it starts to strengthen you. And the thing is that when we exercise our faith through love, and I believe that love is paired with faith. Love is faith in action. Love is serving others. Second Thessalonians, watch this. Watch how love and faith are paired together. Second Thessalonians 1, 3, it says, we ought, we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for another, one another is increasing. And so those two, two things are paired together, is that our love, it comes out of our faith. Faith is the foundation, but our love comes out of that, and when our love is growing, our love for Jesus, our love for other people, when our love is growing, our Faith is growing when our love is growing because when our love is growing, we're practicing. We're exercising and practicing our faith like we talked about last week. I want to pray in just a moment and and I want to just ask the Lord to increase our faith. But I want you to to remember this. Jesus said all you need, the faith in itself is so powerful because it's the belief that God is going to take care of it. So if you want your faith to increase, it's not that you need to muster up some more willpower. God, yes, God wants us to exercise our faith. And so it's not just about going to sitting on the couch and say, laying in the bed and say, God, when you want to do something, you'll, you know, you'll do it. We have to be continue to do faithfully the things that we know, reading the Bible and praying and coming to church like you're coming and serving and working and doing the, taking care of our responsibilities that God has given us. But here's the thing about faith is that I believe that our faith can get deeper. I believe that our faith can increase. I believe that our trust in Jesus can increase. And I want my faith to grow. I want your faith to grow because God, he can do things. He can do things in a moment that we couldn't do in a lifetime. That's what our world, that's what our country, how many would agree that our country right now needs a miracle? Our country. How many agree our church needs a miracle? How many would, could raise your hand and say, my family would need a miracle? How many of you need something in your life today that you cannot do? You, can't, you just can't take care of it. You try. Maybe you've tried. There's a lot of things that I've tried. I've tried to do it, and I've tried to do it, and I've tried to do it. And, and when I come to the end of myself, it's like God is he's waiting there saying, when, whenever you get ready, I'll do something that you can't do. And that's what faith is about. That's the faith that saves us is it does something that's impossible because we couldn't save ourselves. But God did just like Jesus with, with man, it's impossible, but with God, everything is possible. And so that's what faith does for it. It, it saves us. It saves other people. Faith is, it moves, it moves mountains. And so I want our faith to grow. And we're going to pray in just a moment. And and uh, in fact, we've got communion today. I uh, almost forgot about that, but we're going to receive that right here at the end of service in just a moment. But I want to, would you close your eyes with me? And 
Would you just ask the Lord to help you to grow your faith? But I want to encourage you today that Jesus said, if you just have a mustard seed, you, it's not that you need to, man, I need to concentrate harder. I need to pull some more willpower out of myself. When you, if you want to increase your faith today, it's not something that you need to pull out of yourself. It's something that you need to decrease yourself so that God can increase in you. You need to pull from the Lord and lean on Him. Lean on Him. Trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. So today, God, I pray that you would increase our faith. Lord, I pray that you would increase our knowledge for you, God. That I pray that you would give us a hunger for your word and a passion for your word. I pray that you would reveal yourself to us, Lord Jesus, in new and fresh ways. I pray, Lord, that you would just help us to rely on you. God, I pray for miracles. Lord, I pray that your spirit would move in this place and do things that are impossible. Save those that are lost. Heal those that are sick. Provide in ways, God, that we know that we could have never done it. And so, Lord, just increase our faith. Increase our love for one another. God, because as our faith grows, our love for one another increases. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that you made on the cross. God, we thank you for giving your life for us, Lord Jesus. And we do this because of faith. And you go ahead and take that communion. Let's go ahead and get the bread ready. We're just going to receive this together today. We're going to participate in a, uh, an act of worship that's been a part of the church ever since Jesus led the first uh, Lord's Supper on that night when he was betrayed, before he died. And he took the bread and he said, take eat, this is my body. And so as you're holding the bread today, I want us to just... Um, Focus on the sacrifice that he made for us. Like I said, when I was, when I was in that ambulance, they said, you're having a, an active heart attack. And I, and I, I didn't know if I was going to make it. I, I didn't know if I was going to make it. I was in pain and I, they were shooting stuff into me. But one thing that I knew that I had was my faith in Jesus Christ. And one thing that I knew... I knew that I didn't deserve to go to heaven in my own works, but I knew by my faith, I knew my sins were forgiven. And I knew that my name was written in the book of life. And I knew that I was, if I didn't make it, that I was going to go. But I was going to go by the grace of God and by the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you don't have anything else in your life, you have the most powerful thing in your life, which is your faith in Jesus Christ. So I want to just encourage you today. Just put your trust, put your faith in him. He died on the cross. He took the stripes in his body. By his stripes were healed. He took the crown of thorns. So your faith is powerful. Even if you don't feel like it's strong today, even a mustard seed is powerful because of the one who we believe in is the King of kings and Lord of lords. So Lord, thank you. Jesus, for going through that torture, the crucifixion, the word excruciating comes from, means out of the cross. It was a, a type of death that was invented to put someone through the most pain, discomfort they, they could possibly go through for the human body. And I thank you, Lord, that you went through it. You were hum humiliated. You had the sin of the world come upon you. you, had, you the people spat in your face. They ripped your hair out. They punched you in the face. They, and, and one of the most painful things even maybe, people turn their back. People that were Jesus' friends, they turn their back on Jesus. So thank you, Lord, for what you did on the cross. If it was only for you to get saved, he would have done it. What we used to say when I was a kid, when he was on the cross, you were on his mind. He could see into the future and see that you would sin and see that he wanted to bring you into his family. And he paid it all. He paid it all. When he got finished, he said, to tell us die, it's paid in full. It's paid in full. So thank you, Lord Jesus. He took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it, and he gave it to the disciples. He said, take the, this is my body. Let's take the bread. And in the same manner, he took the cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. So, Lord, we thank you for your blood. Because of your blood, we're washed our sins. Blessed is the man whose sins are not counted against him. And I thank you, Lord, that the power the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. It has the power to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
It has the power to save us. And so, Lord, we thank you for your blood. Lord, we receive your sacrifice by faith in Jesus' name. Let's take the cup. And Lord, I thank you for this church family. Help our love to increase for one another. Help our love to increase for you and help our faith grow. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.